Hello, this is Jack Jackson. We're going to look at an optimization problem in this uh, video. This is a kind of a classic problem you'll see in a lot of textbooks. Two towns are on the same side of the river. One town is two miles away from the river and the other is six miles downstream and also four miles away from the river. The two towns plan on building a pumping station at the edge of the river to service both towns. They must lay pipe directly from the station to each of the two towns. Pipe cannot be shared by the two towns. Where should they build the station if they want to minimize the amount of pipe delay? Draw a diagram. Label the exact location of the pumping station. Alright, so here is your diagram. And it's actually at the optimal place where I have it marked. It turns out to be two miles downstream from the first town. And then four more, you know, four miles upstream from the, from the second. So here's the first town here. It's a distance of two miles straight perpendicular to the stream. The, the, the river are, is going here from A to B. Town two is down here at this point down here, which I don't have labeled. And the pipe, the pumping station is here at E, and we lay the pipe here. So we want to minimize this total amount. Now, this is typically done using calculus. So let's do this with the calculus solution. And so what we have to first do is sort of label some things here. Well, this is this is two, this is four uh, in miles, and then we have the uh, this distance here. The total distance is six, and we're going to let x be their distance from A to E. This distance, how far downstream from the first town we need to uh, to go to to uh, put the pumping station. Well, that means this additional distance from E to B is just the total 6 minus X. So this is 6 minus X. This is X. Now, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to get E. This is a right triangle here. And we have this side is 2. This side is not known. It's X. But we could get E in terms of X then. E is then the square root of X squared plus 2 squared. Similarly, this is a minus x, this is 4, we could get that f is the square root of a plus x squared plus 4 squared. So let's call these distances e and f. e was x squared plus b squared, in this case b is 2, so it's x squared plus 4, and then square root of that, or 1 half power. Similarly, we get uh, 6 minus x squared plus 4 squared and then square root or, uh, well, you can think of that square root as the 1 half power. 4 squared is 16. If we square 6 minus x, we get 36. Square the first, square the last, x squared. Multiply and double it, negative 12x for the middle term. Combine like terms, and I rewrote it in decreasing order. That's x squared minus 12x plus 52 to the 1 half power. So the total length of pipe is adding those two together. So we have an expression for the total length of pipe in terms of a single variable x. Okay, so this is this is the total length of pipe. Now if you want to minimize or maximize some function, in this case L, of a single variable, in this case x, we find its derivative and set the derivative equal to zero. So we need to find the derivative here. Uh, this is like u to the 1 half, so it's 1 half u to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the u. The derivative of the inside there is 2x. Plus, uh, let's say this is like w to the 1 half, so we get the derivative is 1 half w to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the w. The derivative of the inside is 2x minus 12. Okay, if we take the 1 half times this, distribute, we get x minus 6. And so we got x minus 6 times this guy here. And then here, the 2 and the 1 half cancel. And x, we have the x I just put in front. So there's an expression for L prime. Now we want to set that equal to 0 and solve. Okay, you get to do a little algebra here. Quite a bit of algebra, in fact. So we set this expression equal to 0. So we start by getting the two terms on each side. And so I did it by subtracting this one here, this first term. So it's on the other side, but now it's negative. Now we're going to square both sides. Now to be careful here when you square both sides to uh, check your answers to make sure that they work. 
why do I want to square both sides? Well, squaring is going to cancel this one-half power or square root. So that makes this negative one power here, makes this a power two, makes this negative x squared is just x squared, and this power becomes negative one. So rewriting these as fractions, this is x minus six squared over this quadratic equals, and then we got x squared over this quadratic here. Now I'm going to uh, cross multiply, or in other words, multiply both sides by both of these denominators. And then we get x squared plus four times the x squared, x minus six squared. By the way, x minus six squared is x squared minus 12x plus 52 again. Uh, wait a minute. I could have, I'm sorry. We've got the x squared. Oh, okay. Here I'm just showing, never mind. I'm just showing that I'm multiplying both sides by the same thing. Then what we get is x squared minus six, x minus six squared times x squared plus four. And here we get x squared times this. So we multiply this out. When you take x minus six squared, you get x squared plus minus 12 x plus 36. Then we distribute here. So I basically use FOIL there. Uh, long multiplication or distributed property here gives you all these terms and this here. For example, on the right, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. x squared times negative 12 x is negative 12 x cubed x squared times 52 is 52 x squared. Here we have x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. For the cube term, we have x squared times negative 12 x is negative 12 x cubed. For the x squared term, we're gonna add a couple of things here. We're gonna get the 36 times x squared plus four times x squared is 40 times x squared. For the x term, we're gonna get four times negative 12 x is negative 40 x, and the constant term is four times 36, which is 144. Combine all things on one side by subtracting x to the fourth, luckily that cancel, and add 12x cubed to both sides, that cancels. And then what's left is the x squares. So if I get zero here, I get 40x squared uh, subtracted from 52x squared leaves 12x squared. And then we're gonna add 48x and subtract 144 to get everything on the right side and zero on the left. So again, luckily the x to the fourth and x cubed cancels. Factor out a 12 out of that, and this factors as x minus two and x plus six. So either x minus two equals zero or x minus six equals zero. And I'll see here, I just divided by 12 to get rid of that. Uh, on both, divided both sides by that. And here, either x equals two or x equals negative six. And if you need to check those answers, if you put back in negative six here, uh, it doesn't give you zero. Um, you can check that. Let's see, we need to check these both these answers. Let's see what happens if we put in negative six. Uh, negative six squared is 36 plus four is, is uh, <coughs> 40. So here we have negative six over the square root of 40. And this is negative 12. And then what does this one turn out to be? Um, uh, I don't want to mess with that. Let me, let me pull up the calculator and just check it out. Uh, probably the easiest way to, to check it is just to do it like this. Take the x that we came up with, uh, negative six store it as x and then just type in the expression like it is and see if it works out x times parentheses x squared plus four to the power negative uh, one half or negative point five I'll just say point five oh negative one half why not Uh, plus x minus 6 times x squared minus 12x plus 52 to the power negative 1 half. And there's some error somewhere. Let's see. Oh, one didn't, didn't, didn't come 
through there. Okay, there we go. Uh, come on, what's the problem here? Parentheses didn't happen either. Okay, this is supposed to be zero, and it's not. Uh, but if we check the negative two, let's see if this one works. Or if I have another problem. Now I can pull up this previous expression by hitting second enter a couple times. That one didn't come out to be zero either, so something is not right here. Oh, positive two. Positive two. Okay, so let's take uh, two stores x and pull up that previous entry. That one does work out. So notice that one checks, but the other one doesn't. So that that happens sometimes when you raise both sides of an equation to an even power. Sometimes you'll get solutions where, for example, the negative 6 would be perfectly fine in, actually from this line down it would solve it, but it doesn't, it's not a solution to the original. So the only legitimate solution is x equals 2, and uh, that's, that's exactly what I have graphed here, where x equals 2, that's going to be the minimum uh, amount of pi. Um, now, from the context of the problem, we can see that this will be uh, a, a, um, a minimum. There's a couple ways we can see that. We can either graph the derivative, the, the original function and, and just see that it's a minimum, or you can even find it's a minimum by doing a calc minimum on your calculator and find that x is 2 there. We could also just kind of look at the problem and realize that if we go over here further, particularly if we go way over here, uh, at the endpoints, which you should check, by the way, uh, if we did the endpoint here, uh, we could just add the 4 here plus a straight distance across here. We should check that as well, and the 2 here and then a straight distance across here. And we find that all those things are more distance. So uh, another way we could look at it is look at the second derivative and show that the second derivative is um, positive, so then that would be a local minimum. Okay. Now when we take those and plug them in, uh, 6 minus x is 4, and these uh, the lengths of tubing of, of um, a, a pipe are 2 square root of 2 for the length e, and uh, 4 square root of 2 for the f, or total length of 6 square root of 2, or about 8.5 uh, miles of pipe when you're adding these together. Now that's a good calculus problem. It's good. It rem reminded us about the Pythagorean theorem, so we had to use that. It's a good pro geometric kind of problem, so we had to put it together. Also, it's good practice finding the derivative, and it's some good practice solving some equations with fraction exponents or square roots in them. However, this is not the easiest solution to this problem. There's a non-calculus solution that's actually much more uh, elegant and easier to use. Um, so just because we have calculus, which is a wonderful tool, doesn't mean it's always the best tool. So here's an easier solution without using any calculus at all. Notice that if you reflect this point C across this, this line for the river, then we get the same distance of tubing here, no matter where we put this point E along this, this route. And then the matter becomes, okay, going from C, like say C to if E was over here, and then add it to here. Or C to over here, and then add it to the distance to D. Which of those, dis where do I put E to minimize that distance? Well, basically you're just saying, where is the minimum distance from C to D where these two line segments go through this this line segment AB, and the answer to the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. We know that from real basic geometry facts. So we just draw in the straight line, and there we have the point there. Now, what's its coordinates? Well, we can do some very simple algebra, just introduce a coordinate system, let A be the origin 
uh, C is actually here at negative uh, 0, negative 2, but we'll put C prime up here at, at um, 0, 2. D is at the point 4, uh, let's see, 6, negative 4. And then we just find the place where that line intersects that. So there's some algebra involved, but it's much easier algebra. We're just going from 0, 2 to 6, negative 4. So the slope then is negative 4 minus 2 over 6 minus 0. So in other words, we went, we went, um, so what did we end up doing? We ended up going 6 to the right and 6 down. So that's a slope of, of uh, actually negative 1. So, and we know the y-intercept is 0, 2. So the equation of that line is just y equals negative x plus 2. And we're just solving for the x-intercept, which clearly is when x equals 2. And so uh, there's a real elegant uh, solution for that using just some very elementary geometry and algebra, whereas up here we use calculus and a lot of more complicated algebra. Both solutions are, are good. Um, the easier solution works without calculus, but the other one would give us some nice calculus practice as well.